Welcome final expense agents and brokers to the most popular audio training and podcast in the industry, The Lead Jerk Show, where we cut through the red tape and give you only the best in expert interviews. So strap in and grab a cold beverage and get ready to learn and earn. Now it's my pleasure to introduce you to the one and only Matt Lowry, also known as The Lead Jerk. All right, everybody, we've got Joseph Bash on the program today. He is a um, final expense agent. I believe he's been in the business around uh, close to two years or 18 months to, to 24 months. So he's going to give some good uh, pointers on stuff that um, kind of he's done. He wrote, uh, I think, quarter of a million dollars last year. Um, he's going to tell kind of where he came from, his background, how he kind of got into the final expense business, and what he did his first 12 months. And... Uh, or rather his first uh, jump into the business um, and then uh, tell how his second full year went and how it's been for him. So uh, it's going to be a great interview. Sit back and enjoy. And again, remember www.theleadjerk.com, www.theleadjerk.com for all your final expense lead needs. Here we go. All right, everybody, we're here with Joseph Bash, and he is from the state of Ohio. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how long Joseph's been in the business. I think a little more than two years. But <clears throat> he's got a pretty interesting story to, to share and uh, just kind of tell some of his background and kind of how he got in uh, filing expense. So with that being said, uh, Joe, go ahead and, you know, introduce yourself and just uh, roll with it and just, you know, tell the guys, you know, kind of how you got introduced to filing expense, uh, maybe a little bit about what you were doing before and uh kind of where you are uh, today now. Okay. Yeah, uh, Joe Bash, I'm from Ohio. I've, uh, prior to final expense, I spent about 20-some uh, years in the telecommunications field and uh, had a couple of curveballs thrown at me in that field and decided I needed to find something new. And um, I ran into uh, Travis Tubbs on the uh, insurance forum and started looking into final expense and uh, decided to make the move. Um, been in the business since uh, July of 2014. In 2014, I, I kind of struggled a little bit to get started. I uh, had about um, $40,000 of production in the first six months. And uh, last year was a good year for me. Uh, 2015, I hit uh, 244000 Wow. Um, yeah. 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 It's a great year. So uh, that's that's my short story. <laughs> All right. What What have you found? Um, you know, I, obviously, I mean, even even to, to most agents, you know, doing you know forty grand their first six months is you know, I think it's doable. Not everybody can do that, but you know, that's that's a good start. And then obviously going in your second full year that next 12 months um hitting right at a quarter of a million dollars worth of production what what do you think you attribute that to um you know with with yourself or external thing you know options you have you've used well i think it took me a little while to get my head wrapped around the business i had uh, spent a lot of time in the corporate world where i was going to meetings and was on time and uh, had to be on time and I, was, I had been getting quite frustrated with uh, the final expense business because, as you all know, people don't show up for appointments and they waste our time. Mm -hmm. it took me a little while. It took me a little while to get my head wrapped around that. Just accept the business for what it is. And um, I took a, uh, a ride one day with Travis Tubbs in, in uh, early in January of last year, and um, it all just kind of clicked for me. Uh, he had a little bit of a rougher day that day, and, um, you know, uh, he, he ended up writing over 2,000 AP that day, but I kind of walked away from that um, just understanding that's what the business is. Right. And you just, you just you got to put your head down and keep moving. And that's what I started doing, and it started clicking. Yeah, so I guess you, 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 you found somebody that, you know, 
consistently year after year after year writes uh, good good production and you rode with them and just kind of took took away from that the the things that you can implement I guess into your work ethic and just just rode with it from that yeah absolutely uh, that combined with uh, you know what Travis teaches having a good presentation having a consistent presentation and, and you know more importantly or I, I guess as importantly is a steady low flow of uh, leads right um, you have to commit to the steady flow of leads. I, I take 30 a week every week and uh, keeps you moving. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, you got to have that. I mean, unfortunately, the final expense business is one that's, I mean, you could argue either way on the, the, the client side, what drives it. Is it need or, or uh, premium? I think it's premium driven, but <laughs> there's a need too there. Um, but it's definitely lead driven. Uh, I mean, there's some way to get referrals, you know, so forth. But I think you're exactly spot on. I think uh, you got to have leads, uh, really, in any 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 form of insurance uh, vertical you're you're gonna you're gonna go after. So, well, that's cool. Um, so, tell me. I know you just got back from a um, from a trip you won. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I went on uh, KSKJ's trip in uh, Cancun last week. Um, they've got some pretty reasonable production requirements, and uh, I was there along with about 15 other FDX agents uh -huh. that, uh, that uh, managed to win the trip. Um, this year, they've got pretty reasonable requirements, too, for, um, I think it's $30,000 in production. You can get a uh, wow. seven-day all expense paid trips so wow that's pretty reasonable and uh, I know that they're uh, a little bit close to taking new agents on right now but uh, good outfit good outfit we had a great trip uh, was at the now Sapphire Resort in Cancun it was all inclusive seven days um, yeah just a nice time I guess you got to I think you said JD was there um, I'm not sure Travis was there too right yeah, Travis okay. And JD were both there. Yeah. Cool. That's right. I got some. I got some uh, text from JD. The show, um, you know, in front of the water and stuff. You know, <laughs> you know basically, yeah. wish I was there. <laughs> so, yeah, good, so good, good, good group of guys, man. Good group of guys. I bet y'all had a good time. So that's 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 cool. Um, well, what what do you see going forward so far? Um, what's going on in 2016? Are you just keeping your head down right now and just, you know, pretty much. Uh, doing the same thing and just uh you know are you working your same areas bouncing around same lead flow number stuff like that what's going on absolutely just going to keep it consistent um so far in january i think i've done about seventeen thousand, and that's with being gone for a week on right. the trip so it's working i'm just going to keep moving ahead keep doing what i'm doing what have you found uh Joe to be, you know, maybe probably from the time you started till now, what's been the most important thing uh, for you to um, learn to maybe, maybe uh, you know, what you may have considered a roadblock in the beginning, but you overcame it um, to, to form what looks like is going to be a really successful final expense career? You know, I... I it's hard for me to say what, what I'm going to do any differently because I, I think I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. You know, keep the lead flow consistent, keep my presentation polished up, get in there, get their budget, right for business. You know, I, I can't say I'm going to do anything any different going forward at this point. Right. It, what, what do you think is the hardest thing you had to overcome from the time you started to now that you that you feel like you've pretty much got mastered now? That you could share with an agent that may be listening that might be going through some, you know, because it's not a, it's not a, <laughs> it's easy, but it's not. I try to explain that to people. Um, you, you, really, you only learn by being in front of the prospect when it comes down to it. Right. Well, and I think uh, as with any sales job, overcoming the uh, objections is probably the biggest thing, but. You know, I, I don't have to do that much anymore. My uh, presentation is geared to bingo, the, bingo, the yep. objections before they come up. Yep. So there you go. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm a pretty uh, 
low key, soft sell kind of guy. I mm-hmm. go in, I, I read them the card, I ask them why they sent the card. Um, you know, it either makes sense or it doesn't. Right. I, I won't. I won't spend my time uh, talking to people that are not interested and not able to commit. Right. You probably got your qualifiers in there that knocks out the people that are going to be a waste of time for you. So that's that's good. Yeah, I've always said I would imagine you probably can uh, you probably could recite uh, your presentation uh, you know in your sleep, and that's the same thing that I can do. And you know, it's certainly gotten easier. I remember yeah. I used to have bullet points that I followed and so forth, but uh, you know, it's it's pretty much automatic now. Um, every once in a while, I get a little bit off track and maybe get the presentation out of order, but I know all the points to hit. Make sure you hit them. Keep moving on. Yeah, sometimes that can be attributed to the uh, <laughs> the prospect too going out in what I call left field, and you have to reel them back in. Um, right. You know, keep keep your agenda. The reason you're there uh, as a as a as the focus of uh, you know the time you're spending with them that day. Um, so you know, without mentioning specific carriers, Joe, what? <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what? You know, or how many carriers um, do you think you might ride on a regular basis? Again, without mentioning carrier names, and and you know, you do you do like a lot of us where you'll have the ones that are niche in a in a in a bag in your car, or maybe one app available just in case. Yeah, uh, last year I was I was kind of all over the place. I think I rode a total of uh, maybe fourteen different carriers last year. Mm-hmm. And as I, went, as I went through the year, I, I kind of started narrowing that down and, and uh, developed what I would call more of a go-to carrier. And um, that's what I'm doing this year. I, I've got a couple of carriers that um, pretty much will fit everybody. And then um, I try to, I've got about four other ones that I'll jump off to when they don't fit. Right. So I... I'm really trying to keep my number of carriers limited to maybe six or seven this year. Right. Do you? Uh, well, and let me ask you this: on top of that, do you? And this may be. This may be dependent on who the carrier is, but do you prefer uh, phone interview carriers with definite yay or nay, or? non-phone interview carriers where you just send it in and if your underwriting is good enough you know in the field you can <clears throat> pretty much know what's going to happen or is it is it is it company specific on who you would or wouldn't do that with <clears throat> I, ab- I absolutely prefer a point of sale yep. company um, I, I want to have a number before I go out the door um, if I get a no answer on the interview or if it's deferred for further underwriting um, I'm writing them with another carrier withdrawing that app. Right, you can do it right then, yep. Absolutely. I want to know that I got it done before I leave. Yeah, I'm the same way. There's only a, there's only probably, out of all the carriers I can think of that are non-phone interview, there's probably two, and that's it, that I would, uh, that I would possibly send business to, you know, and you, you learn that the longer you're in the business, so. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, and I'm about the same. Out of, out of my top six carriers, uh, four of them have a point of sale. Right, <clears throat> the same way I am. I want to know. I want to know before I go. <clears throat> so, what? As far as the final expense business in in general, I know you you said you had a you know pretty much a corporate background. I'm sure you're familiar with charts and graphs. <laughs> um, oh yeah. What uh, you know? What do you see? If any, are there any changes coming along the next five years that you see that's going to you know, be I really don't. I'll tell you that. But um, do you see anything coming in the next five years? It's going to be a major change, other than you know, uh, the obvious carrier changes, whatever they decide to do. But as far as the market goes, I mean, you see it being pretty much the same. You know, the same, same income, same demographic, all that good stuff. Yeah, I I, I really don't see any changes coming. I mean, we're we're still in the baby boom here. We still got a lot of people turning to retirement age. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 53 years old. I got another 10 or 12 years to work, and, and I really don't see any changes in the next 10 or 12 years. I mean, like you said, you're going to have the obvious carrier changes and those things, but uh, 
I, I really don't see anything coming as far as changes. I could be wrong, but that's that's how I feel. Yeah, well, you know what's funny about the carriers? It's um, and I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've I've went and looked at like people that I know have been in the business a long time. When I consider a long time, you know, twenty plus years that they they've been involved in simplified issue. And if you go and look at, you know, the reports you can pull up to look and see, you know, that agency, how many carriers are they're, you know, they're contracted with. And you look over the past 20 years to see how many and who, which carrier was actually being uh, marketed, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And you look and see how many they're not contracted with now and who they're contracted with now. It's just funny, um, you know. Some of the people that are the main players now were were not even on the uh, on the map, you know, ten years ago. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, we're seeing the same thing, even with uh, KSKJ, who I was on a trip with. Right. They've been, they've just done a uh, major rework of their app. There's uh, a lot more knockout conditions. Uh, you know, they they kind of did a little rate change and uh, you know it's, uh, it's the way it is so the, the carriers come and, and they go yeah I mean I'm uh, sure it's, it sounds like it's still going to be a good it could quite possibly still be a good bread and butter carrier though um, oh, I think so from what yeah. I'm reading you know and there's some other yeah there's a there's a couple other ones that are I think doing some uh, application changes uh, coming up here soon that we keep hearing about they're supposed to be pretty pretty sweet uh, one in particular you know, from a carrier that has somewhat of a reputation of being a little higher priced. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes if they get a little more lenient on their on their underwriting. Um, now, I, I, if you're, you know, I'm not sure if you're comfortable with even uh, giving this information out. If you're not, we'll we'll go by we'll bypass it. Um, but who, you know, I know you like KSKJ, but who who. Um, who is your, would you say, is your favorite carrier? Not necessarily who you may write it the, the most <laughs> because, um, you know, Ed, that's dependent. But as far as, you know, agent support or, you know, smooth operating, who would you say is your, your favorite to work with? Well, I've written a lot of Trinity. Yeah, and, um, me too, yeah. I, I, I've just had uh, really good luck with them. I think I wrote 130-some applications with them last year. Um, their their underwriting is pretty reasonable. Uh, their application is absolutely the fastest uh, to fill out. Um, their interview is usually the fastest. So I can get in and out of a house quicker with them than I can anywhere else. Yeah, they absolutely have the fastest interview. Um Probably in the history of FE. <laughs> yeah, I and, you're right. Yeah, and once and if you've got eight appointments in a day, you really you really start to appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what do you what do you got? Um. You know, as far as how did you decide? You know, with there being so many options in insurance, you know, you got PNC, you've got health, you've got. You know other verticals in the the senior market, med sub, cancer, you know, heart attack stuff like that. How did why did you decide to zero in on final expense? Was it the just the ease of of just hey it's you know you follow the system and it's done? Yeah, I think well before I did this, I kind of looked a little bit at some other types of insurance opportunities, and you know the first thing everybody wants you to do is write down your hundred closest friends and family and go talk to them. Oh, yeah. yeah that, that's just not my style. So I kind of had in the back of my head, if I could find a, uh, a product that was where there was a legitimate lead program where you could get leads and not have to go pester everybody you know, right. that I felt, I felt it was a good fit for me. And then the more I learned about final expense, I found out that it was so... I'm not going to say it's easy, right? But it's rel it's relatively simple, right? So, and I knew that there were people in the business um, that had already figured the business out. I had that approach from the beginning. I don't really need to figure this out; it's already been done, right? I just need I just need to find somebody that's really good at it and is willing to teach me. And in my case, that happened to be Travis, right? So I I just 
kind of attached myself to Travis and uh, said, I'm going to figure out what he does, and I'm going to do it just like him. So I, I still do pretty much uh, just like Travis does. Yeah, and <clears throat> while we're at it, if you would, go um, go ahead, and, if you feel comfortable, give out, give out FEX's um, uh, website. So if anybody listening is interested, you know, they can they can contact them. Uh, I guess, you know, Scott or um, I think Travis handles more of the field training and, and sales calls. But, you know, Scott's available as well. Or Mark. Right. Yeah, the, uh, the website, I got it in my. Uh, my I, uh, I got it. I, I know what it is. It's FEXcontracting.com. <laughs> there you go. And, there you um, go. So FEXcontracting.com, and and I, I really can't say enough good things about about Scott and Travis. Um, they've got a great program, um, the best contracts you're going to find in the business, um, the best mix of carriers that you're going to find. Yeah, um, and, and let me stop you there because that's I think that's important. A lot of people don't realize that it's real easy for – if you're a new guy listening, it's really easy to get involved with a company <clears throat> that's going to give you what I call golden handcuffs. They're going to, they they may have a good lead program, they got other stuff going on, but they're going to limit you to the carriers you can write. You need to really look for for groups that have you know numerous companies you can contract with. That way, you don't have to go anywhere else, especially if you're involved with them in some type of lead program. I think that's the best deal you can find. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, and at the same time, though, uh, one of the mistakes that I made, and I think one of the mistakes that a lot of newer agents made, I tried to figure out too many carriers all at once. Um, and JD always taught, um, you know, pick a go-to carrier, figure them out, and write everybody you can with that carrier. Don't go away from them unless you have to. I didn't really do that at first. I think that's also part of what caused me to maybe sputter a little bit at first. Right. Um, but then as I got into it, I settled into who I thought were my go-to carriers, and things started working much better. Isn't that funny how that works? Same thing for me. Um, I guess it's just because you become so familiar with one carrier, it, you know, it just makes life easier all over, and then your fallback two or three you have, you learn them really well, too. Right. And, uh, you know, being in the business now a year and a half, uh, Within just a few minutes, I know right away if they're going to fit with my go-to carrier, and uh, I got a pretty good, a pretty good idea of where I'm going to go if they don't. So, well, uh, with the number of with the number of appointments you've probably been on, probably within ten minutes, you know if they're probably going to be a potential buyer or not. Also, <laughs> right, exactly, and I don't waste time with them if they're not. Right, you know, uh, I'm out of I'm out of the house and I'm off. I'm off door knocking the next one if uh, yeah if uh, if I don't have an appointment. You know, and some some people I talk to that are in other markets of insurance, they're like, "Well, that seems rude." And I'm like, "So, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think it's rude. Um, you're responding to their request. You come to the house, and if you determine um, through necessary investigative uh, questioning uh, that they're just not gonna be interested in protecting their family." You know, there's no reason for you to be there. I mean, I'm not going to sit. I don't, you know, I, I'm not there. I'm friendly, but I'm not there to be their friend, you know. So I'm there to to, to do business and to protect, you know, them and their family, just bottom line. And, Absolutely. You know, if Absolutely. they're not willing to do that. I, I'm, I'm not going to spend time with people uh, that, that don't want to buy from me. Um, I really don't do any warm-up. You know, I'm there because I'm a professional. I'm there to address yep. their needs. I'm going to make a sale or not, and I'm getting out of the house. You know what, Joe? You, you hit you hit the nail on the head. I really don't do a warm up either. Um, I think I think warm up is um, I think it's oversold. I think it's uh, I think it's weak positioning by people that recommend doing that. That really don't know how to sell or never have really been out in field sales, um, and that may be a little abrasive but that's how I feel because <clears throat> I know too many agents that don't don't really do a warm-up you know you do the 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 casual you know hey how you doing I'm so and so you know introductions but as soon as I'm in that door after I do that 
and I'm a, uh, you know, I might say something about their little yappy dog jumping on me. Oh, I've got one like kind of like that. You know, that's pretty much all right. I do. And then I take control. We're going to the table, or we're going to a chair, or we're going somewhere, and we're cutting the TV off or cutting it down, and we're getting down to business. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. who people people want to buy from people like that. You know. Well, I think I think if you mess around with too much warm up, it really dilutes your credibility. It does. You know, like, like I said, I, I'm there because I'm a professional. I'm here. You've got a problem, and I'm here to solve it. You know, I, not not that I'm I'm harsh. I uh, right. I do I do smile and say hello. I might I like animals, so I might pet their dog a little bit right. or something. And I'm off to the table. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I agree. You can you can waste too much time. I mean, sometimes these people bless their hearts. They're you know you might deal with somebody that's you know for whatever reason or another you don't know until you start asking some questions. Um, what they've got going on in their life, and uh, you know some kind of want to share, and that's okay. But you still have to delicately, you know, I think bring them back around to to where you need them to be. And I don't know if an, there's no I don't think there's an easy way to really do that other than just getting out in front of people and figuring out your own method for doing that, you know? And it sounds like to me you, you've got that nailed down for sure. No, I, I work at it, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun, actually. I enjoy what I do. Yeah, it's, um, you know, and, and, and everybody has, I guess, what you call a goose day. I mean, it's rare. It's rare for me now. It's probably rare for you too, where you don't actually ever sell anything in a in a in a day. But um, you know, for guys listening, you know, hey, that happens to everybody. I mean, I know guys that do, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year. It happens to. It's just part of the business. But you know, as as I think JD said one time to me, you know, um, you can have a bad day or a bad week, but if you keep working, you're you're not going to have a bad month. You might have an okay month, but you won't have a bad month. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, I've, I've certainly had uh, goose egg days. I've never had a goose egg week. Right. Um, but then you got good weeks, too. Um, mm -hmm. last, this, this week I wrote $7,000. There you go. Um, you just got to stay with it. Keep on moving. So, with that being said, what... um. What would what could you say to you know either either a, well we'll say a new agent initially but then maybe the agents that's been in this business you know for a year um, that are looking you know they're, maybe they're struggling a little bit um, and for whoever what for whatever reason what advice could you give them um, you know going forward say I don't you know it could be you know, maybe they need to explore a different group. Maybe they're not getting support they need. I don't know. It could be a number of things. But what could you recommend to first a new agent that's potentially looking to get in final expense? You know, they're trading. They're trading carefully. Obviously, if they're even listening to this, they're doing due diligence, which they're ahead of the they're ahead of the game already there, um, rather than just jumping into the first thing they see. Or you know, an agent that's been in this say for a year and they're just struggling. What could you what what kind of advice could you offer them, Joe? Well, I think um, getting yourself involved with the right marketing group is is really very important. Um, we have a lot of camaraderie at FEX. Um, we're on the group me chat all the right. time, talking to each other. Uh, we've got our Friday calls. Um, you know, it, I think it's just really important that you surround yourself with a lot of people who are successful doing what you do. Um, beyond that, um, lead. You gotta commit to lead. Right. If you're not if you're not committing to a steady flow of leads every week, you're in trouble. And again, like I've talked already, get your presentation down. Get with somebody that knows what they're doing. It doesn't have to be Travis. It can be anybody. Anybody that's successful, get with them. Figure out what they're doing to be successful. Um, you've got to be willing to get up and work. Um, I know a lot of agents spend some time sitting on a couch watching TV. Yeah, I don't. Right. I don't. Um, if I'm if I've got field days, I'm in the field. 
If I don't have appointments, I'm door knocking. If I get a no-show, I'm door knocking. Um, I come back, I process my business, I get up the next day and I do the same, same thing. Same thing, yep. So I, I've got, uh, I try to do three days a week in the field. Uh, Thursday is kind of my catch-up day in the office to get all my business processed. Uh, Friday, we have our conference call with FEX. Right. And then usually in the afternoon, Friday, I take off. So I got two and a half, three day weekend. I got to recharge the batteries. But that's that's nice. And coming from corporate, you probably, I don't know, I, I came from corporate too. I've rarely ever had a three day weekend. You know? No, I almost, I almost never did. Yeah. And even when you're off, if you've got any kind of position of authority at all, you're even Saturdays can be a real pain in the ass. You know? Right, exactly. So. And, and, and it works out well for me. I like to hike. I, I hike around 600 miles a year. So, wow. You know, having a three, four day weekend once in a while is, is just great for me. It allows me to do what I want to do. Excellent. Well, Joe, it sounds like you got it nailed down, man. Um, I mean, I, I think that... Uh, yeah, dude, for, for, for an example of anybody that got in this, you know, and and it's been a year and a half, you're a, you're a real good example on what people need to do to, to be successful. Um, and and I, I don't necessarily think everybody can be successful, but I think a lot of people that are failing right now could do better. Um, but, it, you know, it comes down to, to them and their work ethic and what they're willing to do, right? And do you let me ask you one last question here. Do you think that... Um, and the reason I bring this up is I find that because I talk to a lot of agents and you know I'm not I'm I'm kind of anal about stuff but I'm pretty detailed and organized and sometimes I think that um, that's not within everybody to be that way but I think it has to be kind of uh, a trait that you have to develop and make yourself be organized and, and detail oriented in this bit or really any business if you're really gonna excel and uh, I've just always been that way. Um, and I think that it's important for agents, especially in final expense, to understand kind of they need to be, you know, you've got to be organized in the field. You've got to be organized when you get back to your office to process business. Do you do you find the same thing? Oh, absolutely. And, and I think I take that a little bit for granted because of the years I spent in business. Right. You had to be organized. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, everything's got its place and it's in its place. Uh, I don't spend any time fumbling around for applications in the field or anything. Right. So it's, I've got a, a, a system for everything is always in the same place. Um, I come back to my office. My office is neat and organized. Uh, I get my business processed. I'm done. I can close that chapter and move on to the next one. Uh, organization is, is paramount, I would say. Yep, it, it, it definitely is. Cool. All righty, Joe. Well, look, it's been uh, a pleasure talking to you. Um, I, uh, I'm i sure you're, we're going to see you out there and at even more trips the way, you're, the way you're rolling. Do you have any specific goal for this year that you're trying to hit at all? Or, or just, you know, quarter of a million, that's a pretty good goal. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to set my goals much higher than that. Right. I mean, as, as, young as, as young as I am in the career, I don't know if last year was an anomaly or not. So I'm, I'm just going to try to duplicate that again this year. Right. And, uh, and we'll see where we go next year. Okay. Well, cool. Well, look, I really appreciate your time. Again, um, you know, for anybody listening, uh, you know, fine expense agents like Joe Bash are – you know, again, detail oriented. They they've got very good time management skills. I can tell he does, and they're pretty busy. So, Joe, with saying that, I, I appreciate your time today, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to work on this the next few days and get it all set up for on the uh, recording. And uh, once I get it done, I will shoot you over a link and um, let everybody have at it. So, um, again, I, I appreciate your time very much today, and uh, I look forward to um, hopefully one day actually meeting you face to face. Okay, man. Hey, it's been good talking to you. Yes, sir. I'll I'll see you soon, right. Jeff. All right, buddy. Okay, thank bye -bye. you. Yes, bye. sir. Bye-bye. Well, I want to thank Joseph for uh, being on the call today. That was some good uh, uh, in-the-trenches, in-the-field 
sales experience information for you guys. So uh, look forward to more of those kind of interviews on the way from uh, me, Matt Lowry, the lead jerk. Appreciate you guys listening. And as always, remember to visit www.theleadjerk.com. Again, that's www.theleadjerk.com for the best in final expense leads. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.